Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and in today's video, I'm taking a look at this mini PC from a company called Ace Magician. So I've done quite a few videos on the channel featuring Ace Magician uh, PCs and mini PCs and even a laptop. And I do think that they, you know, in the industry of, of these types of devices, I think they make a really good product. So if you're in the market for this sort of thing, you know, you can take a look at this video. So this one in particular is probably one of the more performant ones that I've taken a look at. I have seen a few of their AMD Ryzen uh, chipset machines, which th those really work really well. Um, you know, packing a pretty pretty big punch, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, uh, that sort of thing. But this one features an Intel i5, and it's the 12450H processor. So that's eight core and 12 threads. And, you know, it's one of the more modern processors because it does have the four performance cores and four efficiency cores, which is nice, right? So you're kind of getting into this, uh, the more modern multi-core architectures and all of that. And, you know, the 12 threads, etc. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it does have up to a 4.4 gigahertz uh, boost speed and a 2 gigahertz base speed. So we have the machine here. Go ahead and put that to the side. Small user manual, as you would expect. And because this one is a bit more of a power hungry machine, you do get a bigger power brick. So this is more like a kind of like a laptop power brick, uh, barrel jack, US adapter here. So yeah, this is like a 19 volt, 109, yeah, 119 watt. Uh, power brick, so pretty, pretty powerful. Also an HDMI cable. And this is what it looks like. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of got like a matte and glossy like stripe design. And what's hard to tell here, it looks flat, but it's actually kind of like swoops out on the sides. So I do believe that's for more airflow and it has extra fins on the inside and things like that. So that's nice. And this basically then only allows you to stand it up. You can't really lay it on its side because it's got these flare outs. But, you know, again, not too big and looks nice in the vertical vertical uh, orientation. See so here on the bottom, they have this like, orange accent stripe. On the front, you have some USB ports, audio port, a Type-C port. And then on the back, you have quite a few things, right? So you have, so you have what looks like a reset button there, a couple more USBs, two HDMI's, a LAN port, a power cable, and then a lock, Kensington lock port. And then on top, you just have a power button. So fairly simple, stealthy looking, uh, you know, enclosure. So this one does have 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, it has a 512 gigabyte NVMe PCIe 3 SSD, and it also can support up to two terabytes of a additional two and a half inch SSD. We'll take a look at how that works, but you can add another hard drive in the inside here basically. It has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, um, the RJ45 network jack, one gigabyte LAN, the USB, See on the front, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Those are the blue ones here. And then this is three screen capable, so you can have uh, two monitors with the HDMI and then one on the USB-C. And they all support 4K at 60, 60 hertz. So it looks like there's a couple screws here. I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. And I believe the side panel just kind of pops off then. So the side panel pops off and gives you easy access to, um, you know, the expandability options here. So again, the M2 SSD, it's mounted there. I can't see the brand. It's got a heat sink on it. Uh, there's Lexar memory and two eight gigabyte sticks, so 16 in total. So you can swap that out if you wanted to add additional memory. And then for the two and a half inch SSD, just plugs in right there. And then there's a little screw 
kind of bracket to hold it down. So you just kind of take this off, loosen it, stick the drive in, and then clamp it in with that. So there's no other screws or anything. So that's a nice feature, nice way to kind of mount that in there. Just clamp it from one end. And I mean, that's basically what's inside. So pretty easy to access, just a couple screws on the bottom. And then you just put it back in here, slide it up, and then put the screws back in. As with all of these mini PCs, there's a bunch of things you can do, do with these, right? If you want to use this as like a multimedia device for your TV, uh, you can use it for a home server, you can use it for just a regular desktop, obviously, for home, school, office, all of that, web browsing, productivity. This one's probably powerful enough. You can do some light gaming, and that should work pretty well. With the i5 processor and integrated Intel graphics, this one should do pretty good. It does have some good cooling vents here on the back and then the bottom, so the airflow through the case should be pretty good. And overall, I really like it. It looks nice, looks pretty, pretty sleek, and would look at home in your in entertainment center, on your desk, or whatever. So, so that's what it looks like. So what I'm going to do, like most of the other reviews where I do PC, take a look at PCs, I'm going to go ahead and boot this up. And then we'll do some screen recording of doing some benchmarks and just testing it out and getting my opinion and seeing how it performs, any pros and cons that I see, and go from there. So let's go ahead and hop on over to the computer. So the first thing I did was run a crystal disk mark, and as you can see, it performed pretty well. So it does have a pretty quick uh, SSD, NVMe SSD. So this was, uh, I was pretty happy with this. And then the second test I did run, I ran a pass mark benchmark test. And as you can see here, the CPU and the memory and the disk all scored pretty, pretty high and pretty well. It did, you know, come in a little bit lower on the 2D graphics and the 3D graphics, which again, you can imagine is the case because this is a integrated Intel uh, graphics chip, right? You know, it's not a super fast graphics card or anything like that, but it should, you know, still perform pretty well in some light games or, you know, any kind of thing where you do need some 3D performance. It shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad. But for everything else, uh, this machine should be able to handle whatever you can throw at it from a productivity, a home media center, server perspective, all of that. I think uh, it should perform pretty well given these scores. And then I also ran a Geekbench uh, benchmark test as well, both for the CPU and then both versions of the GPU. As you can see here, 2243 single core score. Uh, 9078 multi-core score. So this is a pretty decently performing machine, you know, versus some of the other lower level N95s or, you know, lower powered mini PCs that I've tested on the channel before. This one's pretty, pretty decent. And then the open CL score is 8432. And then the Vulcan score is 10,054. So both pretty good for, again, this class of machine with the integrated Intel UHD graphics. And then the last benchmark I did run was the Cinebench benchmark. And you can see that the CPU multi-core was 7,947. The CPU single core was 1,609 and the ratio was 4.94. And I did do some streaming testing here just to see how that performed Everybody, and, you know, Andrew performed Andrew well. I only and streamed my own YouTube video because I didn't want to get a copyright PC. strike when this I was going to do PC. Netflix or anything like, else magician. like that. So now I've done a few other as you can see, it, it works fine. 16 gigabyte RAM configuration with the 512 SSD. Obviously, probably just going to have some information there through when it's on. And overall, that's so you have quick. And any delays that. you see so, here like is said, really just because I was clicking around in the timeline and the audio uh, wasn't completely synced with uh, uh, the screen recorder that I was using. So, uh, 
other other than that, I, everything was good. Feeds up on the SSD. I became. And then the last thing I was doing here was playing a little bit of Asphalt Nine, and you know I didn't record the audio for this because it was playing some music that I think probably would have got a copyright strike. But as and I'm terrible at this game, uh, I was just using the keyboard. But uh, it doesn't do that bad or half bad when you're playing, uh, you know, playing playing games. Uh, I had the graphics kind of cranked up on this and. I didn't really have any issues. I did hear the fan kind of spin up a little bit more while this was going on, as you would expect. But overall, I mean, if you, I mean, my my feeling is that if you have some games, some some light games, even 3D games like this, you shouldn't have really any problem. It's not going to be a top performing, you know, desktop with a discrete graphics sort of uh, experience, but it works pretty well. So overall, I was pretty impressed by this machine. Um, like I said, it, it's a pretty sleek, cool looking device, has plenty of expandability. I do like the Intel i5 that's in this, the eight cores, 12 threads, uh, you know, the DDR memory, the SSD and all of that performed very well for, you know, for this level of machine. So if this is something you're in the market for, you really might want to take a look at it. And I don't know if they're going to be any more sales or whatnot as a time of this posting there is a coupon on amazon for that to save a little bit of money looks like it will run about 300 dollars or so and in that price range i think that's uh this is a pretty good performing machine for the price if you have any questions go ahead and post those below and i'll be happy to answer this is andrew from ts for tech thanks for watching and i'll see you next time Ooh.